Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our weekday family devotions. We're glad you're here. Let's go ahead and pray together, and then we'll come to the Word of God. Father, we're thankful for the day you've given, and Lord, our prayer in these moments is for your blessing and your help. God, that you would speak to our hearts and challenge us. Father, that you would uh, help us live dedicated uh, lives to Jesus Christ, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our weekday family devotions. Let's go ahead and open our Bibles to Jeremiah chapter number 20. Jeremiah chapter 20. In chapter number 19, we find another uh, another instance here where Jeremiah is, uh, he goes and he gets a, a, a potter's earthen vessel. And of course, he's a great illustration. He breaks the potter's vessel and it cannot be made whole again. He took the ancients of the people there, of the priests, to go and see it. And he and people didn't appreciate what Jeremiah had to say, and so Jeremiah is put in the stockade by by Pasher, uh, the the, um, and so uh, he's he's the chief priest, the chief governor, and uh, and do you ever and man, here we find in chapter twenty we find the humanity of Jeremiah coming to the forefront. Of course. We understand he's he's just a man, uh, but he's a godly man, a man that God had chosen to do a very difficult work, uh, to preach his word in the midst of a people that couldn't have cared less, that were so stiff-necked and, and hard-hearted that, that they weren't going to change their ways regardless. But here we have God in his mercy. Uh, think of the, the this man's ministry was that of the mercy and righteousness of God, the justice of God as he continually begged and pleaded with the children of Israel to turn again and be made right. And and Jeremiah, after being put in the stocks, he, he comes to himself. And, and listen to what he says. He says, um, he says, O Lord, verse 7, Jeremiah 20, Thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. For since I spake, I cried out, I cried violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me, and a derision, uh, and a derision daily. He says, "Listen, what I've been saying is hard. It's difficult." He says, "Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name." He says, "I can't do this anymore." Every time I go, of course, I'm, I'm cast into prison. I'm beaten. I'm mocked. I'm ridiculed. He says, I'm in derision, okay? And he says, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to preach. I'm not going to tell anybody what you said anymore, God. And then, then, then he makes this statement. I want you to note in verse number 9, he says, But his word was in mine heart, as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. He says, I couldn't help it. He says, I, in my flesh, I didn't want to say anything. In the weariness of my heart, as, as I was mocked and ridiculed and persecuted, I said, I had enough. But his word was in my heart like a burning fire. He says, I couldn't help but declare it. You know, is, that, is that how God's word is in your heart? Have you ever read something from God's word that it just shook you to the core and you couldn't help but speak all the things of God? This is what has happened in Jeremiah's life. Yes, in his humanity and this in the, the despair of his flesh, man, he was tired of it. But in his heart, he could not help it. Because God had anointed him, God had had ordained him, and God had spoken to him, and he could not help but speak it. I pray that that's the case for you and me. I pray that every day we read the Word of God, that we understand it, that He speaks to us, that He gives us something so deep, so profound, so helpful, that we cannot help but declare it to others, even if our flesh is in rebellion. May, may God help us today. I, I pray that God would, would help us. And He says in verse 11, He says, But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. You know, it doesn't matter what people say, think, or do. Because God's with you as a mighty, terrible one. There's nothing that any man can do or say to you. Um, it's God is in control. He's able. And you and I can trust in him as we declare his word. What a mighty God we serve. 
Father, we're thankful for the day you've given. And Lord, our prayer is for your help, for your blessing, uh, Lord, upon our lives on this day, that you'd help us speak uh, uh, speak the things concerning God to others, even when our flesh doesn't want to, Lord, even when we're intimidated, Lord, even when we uh, are doubtful or fearful, Lord, it may, may you help us, give us the grace and power we need to live our lives for thee, O oh God, knowing that you're with us as a mighty, terrible one. And so, Lord, we love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. It's always an honor to have you. I'm praying for you, and Lord willing, we'll see you back here tomorrow. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.